We are working from the February, March 2018 paper. Uh, it's paper 22, so it is the extended multiple choice questions. And we are going to hit whatever topic we get. So question one, way back at the beginning of the course, biology is the study of living things. Which characteristic applies to all forms of life? Okay, so characteristic A, able to move from place to place. Well, it's a, a characteristic of life, but not all forms of life. Able to reproduce. Well, that sounds suspiciously like it is everybody, but let's just double check the other answers as well. Carry out photosynthesis, not all of them, and possess a nervous system, again, not all of them. So if we have confirmed, we're completely happy with answer B. And the thing is, as you work through your final exam, you can work through this like this as well. You can scribble all over your question paper. Just make sure that your answer sheet for the multiple choice is lovely and neat and tidy and just has colored into your final answer. Okay, question two. Two animals have an identical sequence of amino acids, sequence of amino acids, in one of the proteins found in their cells. So what does this indicate about these animals? Now remember that the sequence of amino acids depends on DNA. So if they have an identical sequence, then they have more similar, well they have identical, not even just more similar, they have identical DNA for this protein. So when we think about DNA, and we think about DNA being identical, we're thinking about the fact that these organisms are very closely related. So, we can work through now their answers. They've been eating the same types of food? No, I don't think so. They have not been exposed to substances that cause mutation. Hmm. Well, mutation changes the DNA, so if they haven't had mutations, then they would have the same DNA. So let's leave that one for now. They must be members of the same genus. Now we're saying they've got identical DNA, so we're saying they're actually probably more closely related than a genus. They share a recent ancestor. Definite. Yes, that one we like. We can confirm that D is, B is not what we're looking for. And D is most definitely the idea. Because if their identical is if their DNA is identical, then they've got to be very recently linked in order to have that same amino acids coming from that same DNA. Question three. Sticking with classification. When we've got a question like this, we know straight away we are looking at a dichotomous key. So, the diagram shows part of a flowering plant. Using the key, identify this plant. So the first question says, do we have three petals or more than three petals? So if we look at a flower there, we've got one, two, three, four petals. So we go to three. Then we look at three and we say, are the leaves parallel vein or not parallel vein? So we look at a leaf and we can see that the veins are branching. Okay? If it was parallel, they would be parallel, like parallel lines. So the leaves are not parallel veined. So the answer is D. So you're systematically working through the information that's given in the question so that you can get to the final answer. Everybody happy? So, something different. The diagram shows a single cell from an organism called spirozyra. Now, you haven't studied that, but it doesn't matter, okay? This is what we call an applied question. It's going to make you use the information that you've got and that you've learned in order to answer this question. So we see a vacuole, cytoplasm, chloroplast, cell wall, cytoplasmic strand, and nucleus. Okay. Which features does spirogyra share with plant cells? So of these features here, what do plant cells also have? Do plant cells have a cell wall? Absolutely. Chloroplasts? Yes. Cytoplasm? Most definitely. Nucleus? Absolutely. 
and the vacuole, definitely permanent large vacuole when it comes to plants. So we've answered independently. Now we go and we see which row in the table matches all our ticks. And here it is. A is the answer that matches ours. So wherever possible, we want to be answering these questions, then looking for the one that matches, rather than getting led astray and distracted by dodgy, weird answers that they might put. Okay, so the next one. A student was told that a drawing of a bacterial cell had been magnified 50,000 times. The length of the drawing was 45 millimeters. What was the actual length of the bacteria? So magnification can come up in our, don't write it, in our theory papers as well as our alternative to fact papers. And the thing that we've got here is we've got a 45 millimeters. Now, when it comes to bacterium, what do we actually use to measure that? We don't use millimeters. We use micrometers. So we need to get out of that 45 millimeters into micrometers before we can then calculate the actual length. So that's why we measure, measure in millimeters always, because we can say 45 times 1,000 equals 45,000 micrometers. Then we need to think about magnification is image over actual. So then if we want to get actual, we would say, well then, if we let's do our triangle as well, seeing how different people like different things. So from the triangle or from rearrangements, we know that actual equals image over magnification. So in this case, it would be 45,000 over 30,000. Well, all of those zeros are going to cancel. 45 divided by three, where I've missed something, I've missed a zero. That's 30,000. Yes, 45 divided by 30, that sounds a whole lot better. So our answer then is the 1.5 micrometers. So always remember when you're working with magnification, you must have things in the same units, any measurements must be in the same units. And when you're working with very small measurements of cells or smaller than cells, you always want to be working in micrometers. Millimeters is what we use when we're measuring our images or the diagrams that we've drawn. Question six. Which graph represents the effect of increasing temperature on the rate of diffusion? And we don't even look at the graphs. First of all, we think what happens when we increase temperature, we're going to increase diffusion because we're increasing that kinetic energy. So if we're increasing both, our graph should look like this. And then we go and we look at the graphs we're given, rate of diffusion against temperature, going up to the right, and the answer is D. So again, we're using our knowledge to answer the question and then finding the matching correct answer. Question seven. Protoplasts are plant cells that have had their cell walls removed. Hmm. What happens if plant protoplasts are placed in distilled water? They get larger or they get smaller? Now we need to think again, because here we are talking about osmosis, right? Distilled water is pure water. So this is very high water potential. When you have high water potential outside, what happens? There's your cell, the water is going to move in. So our cell is definitely going to get bigger. Now normally when we talk about plant cells, 
when the water goes in and osmosis happens, now the, the contents get bigger and then we get turgid and we get pressure and all of those wonderful things. So that is all dependent on that cell wall. So if there's no cell wall, then our plant cell is going to act just like an animal cell. It's going to get larger and larger and larger to a point where you can't hold that pressure. And then it's going to pop. So our cell, our plant protoplast, will get larger, but then it will burst because it has no cell wall to hold it safe with that pressure. Question eight. When a food substance is tested with iodine solution, which color shows the presence of starch? So remember, iodine solution is a yellow-brown color to start with. Sort of orangey color, okay? Positive is blue-black. So the answer is A. You must be familiar with the tests for all of your different biological molecules because, again, they can come up in the theory as well as in the alternative to practical. They're not restricted to that paper six only. Question nine. The graph shows the activity of three digestive enzymes at differing pH levels. Okay, so we've got enzyme X, enzyme Y, enzyme Z. pH is from one to 12 and we're measuring enzyme activity. So you can see for each enzyme activity goes up and then it goes down. So it's showing the optimum pH is different for each of these enzymes. Which statement is correct? Well, we're gonna to have to work through each of these and decide yes or no. Enzymes X and Y are both active at pH seven. So pH seven, that cuts through Y and Z, not X. So that's wrong. Enzymes X and Z are both active at pH four. pH four cuts through Y and X, not Z. Enzymes Y and Z are both active at pH four. Again, Z is not active at four. Z only starts at 4.5. So let's see if they get it right the last time. Enzymes Y and Z are both active at pH eight. So coming up from pH 8, and there we hit Z and we hit Y. So finally, they got a correct statement. Both of those enzymes are active at pH 8. From enzymes to plant cells. Okay, so the diagram shows a cross section of part of a leaf. You can see we've got the midrib, the lower epidermis, the upper epidermis and then a layer X. Layer X, right underneath the upper epidermis, this is our palisade mesophile layer. Which type of cell is found in layer X? Well, palisade cells. And the really special thing about those palisade cells is that long skinny shape with lots and lots of chloroplasts. So if we look at all of these cells, the best option for that would be option A. 